Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's tackle this problem without seeing the actual sketch of the two functions. So we have no idea if there's any solutions or multiple solutions. Let's go ahead and solve the problem, see what we get. Now in this particular case, take a look. I believe those are two hyperbolas because we have an x squared and a y squared, and one is positive, the other one is negative. And then here's the other way around. But notice if we add the two equations, we get rid of the x squared and we get rid of the 2y squared. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to add the two equations together. Here we get 0. Here we get 5xy. Here we get 0 is equal to 0. Okay. So that means that when we divide both sides by 5, we get xy is equal to 0. Okay. So... We have two variables, x times y equals 0, which means that either x equals 0 or y equals 0. Okay, so that's the two possibilities. So when x equals 0, what will y be equal to? y equals 0, what will x be equal to? So what we need to do now is plug that back into one of our two equations. So let's go ahead and plug that into this equation. So we end up with x squared plus 2xy minus 2y squared is equal to 6. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start with x equals 0. If x equals 0, then we get 0 plus 0 minus 2y squared is equal to 6. Divide both sides by a negative 2. We get y squared is equal to negative 3, which means that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 3. Now, of course, the square root of negative 3 is an imaginary number. This can be written as plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3. And of course, the square root of negative 1 is equal to i, the imaginary number, so that means that y is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 3. So that's the case when x is 0, y is plus or minus i times the square root of 3. And then we can do it again with y equals 0. So when y is equal to 0, <coughs> we're going to take the same equation again. So we're going to write x squared plus 2xy minus 2y squared is equal to 6. Now y is going to become 0, so end up with x squared plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 6, or x squared is equal to 6, or x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. So, when y is 0, x is equal to this. When x is 0, y is equal to that. That gives us four possible solutions. Let's take a look. So, starting with x equals 0, we have 0, comma, plus i times the square root of 3. Or we have 0, comma, negative i times the square root of 3. And then, when y is equal to 0, we end up with the, the square root of 6 and y equals 0. Or negative the square root of 6 and y equals 0. And those are the four possible solutions. Now, of course, only two of them are real and the other two are imaginary, which means the only two real solutions I have is this right here and this right here. So therefore, we can conclude there's only two solutions. The top two are imaginary numbers and do not count. And that is how you do that. So, that's a good question. Why can't both be equal to zero? Um, well, that is what we call a... Um, it's a, a it's what they that. call a trivial solution. And we don't care about trivial solutions. It's just a trivial... <laughs> hey, I didn't pick the name. That's what they call it. It is lost. <laughs> it's a trivial solution. No, when you plug it in, it doesn't satisfy the equation. So, not a good, not a good solution. 